thanks. Um, this is uh, a, a different uh, research. Uh, we are uh, recovering ammonia, yeah. uh, recovering uh, phosphate, and uh, uh, we're using uh, gas permanent membranes to do both things at the same time. Uh, I acknowledge my uh, co-authors. Patrick Dubé, he was a postdoc uh, that worked in this project, and now uh, he's in the biosolids programs with the Water and Environmental Federation. Uh, Ariel Soji and Marie Cruz Garcia from Spain and uh, help us also with, with the project at uh, Florence, South Carolina. So, uh, my presentation has uh, two topics. Uh, the first one is the improved ammonia recovery uh, from the liquid using the gas membranes. And then uh, we combine uh, both processes to recover uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. So, so there are two, two types of treatment, uh, nitrogen recovery treatment and phosphorus <coughs> recovery treatment, and we get uh, three products out of these. Uh, first one, phosphorus products, nitrogen products, and uh, I think the clean water in the future will have some, some value. So I put, uh, uh, I put it there. So uh, for the recovery of uh, liquid manure, uh, of ammonia from the liquid manure, um, we uh, use the gas permeable membranes, and uh, the membranes uh, are uh, submerged in the liquid, uh, the manifold, and uh, we can uh, produce uh, liquid fertilizer with uh, uh, 50,000 to maybe 100,000 uh, parts per million with this process. The uh, U.S. Uh, patent was uh, awarded in, into this uh, process. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, low ideation, and that uh, improves uh, the whole uh, process to recover the ammonia. Uh, we have a concentrator tank, and we continually uh, recirculate uh, the diluted acid uh, so that uh, we can capture uh, the ammonia <coughs> in the module. Uh, we uh, tested the system uh, using uh, raw manure uh, from a pits, uh, also uh, manure from uh, digesters. And in this uh, uh, case, we're going to use uh, manure from, from digesters manure. So what is intended to do, the technology? Uh, we remove ammonia uh, from inside the liquid before the ammonia goes into the air. And uh, another thing is that the nitrogen is recovered uh, in a concentrated purified form, uh, in this case will be a salt of an acid. So for this um, uh, technology, uh, we have mm -hmm. the gas uh, permeable membrane. Uh, you can see in the picture that the ammonia uh, goes through uh, the pores, air pores, and then <coughs> an acidic uh, solution uh, put that as uh, an ammonium salt, as ammonium again, or ammonium salt uh, fertilizer. Uh, this is another diagram uh, showing uh, the membrane uh, submerged into a dirty wastewater. And uh, we have an hydrophobic uh, polymer membrane, uh, for example, EPTFE, like a Teflon, but it's expanded with the poros. And uh, um, you see the gas uh, uh, fill pores. And then uh, as uh, the ammonia Ammonium is being converted to ammonia NH3. Uh, the NH3 uh, goes through the uh, gas pores and then uh, we strip uh, the ammonia in the other side of, of the membrane with acid. Now it is clear that the higher the pH, uh, the OH that is here, uh, the faster is the process. So increasing the pH from 8 to 10 will increase the process. Uh, Right, 10 times. So, so the process is very sensitive to the <coughs> pH in the manure. Now, uh, there are two ways to increase the uh, pH of, of the manure that I know. Uh, one is uh, to add alkali chemicals. And uh, to add chemicals, maybe two, three grams of sodium hydroxide per liter. This is very expensive to increase uh, the pH of the manure with uh, the chemicals. So what we do is uh, we apply low rate ideation. Now we take advantage 
or the alkalinity of the waste water. So when we apply air to the uh, bicarbonate, uh, it releases hydroxide. And, and then uh, the hydroxide increases the pH about one unit. And we apply very little air. We don't want to apply too much air. In fact, uh, it's very little air, and we also apply a nitrification inhibitor because we don't want the ammonia to go into nitrate, to stay there so we can capture. And we use about 10 parts per million <coughs> of nitrification inhibitor, like a, a, a nitrate print that you use uh, in, in the crops. Mm. So, uh, uh, the process was tested in a lagoon, effluent, uh, anaerobic. Uh, this in, in, South, in North Carolina, they put uh, these uh, covers. Uh, and what happened is the ammonia emission stops. Uh, so so you, you trap the ammonia. But the concentration of ammonia in, in the liquid goes up, maybe from 500 parts per million to, in this case, uh, 2,000 parts per million. So it's more concentrated in ammonia. Um, so, uh, this is the process diagram. This was done in the laboratory, but uh, this is how, how the process will look. Uh, we apply low radiation, increase the pH, ammonia gets into, uh, goes through the membrane, and we uh, concentrate the ammonia here. And we keep recirculating uh, the acid, another more concentrated acid here, uh, but always what is being circulated is very diluted. Uh, we evaluated two, two treatments, uh, no ideation and ideation. And uh, what you see uh, is that with ideation, we can increase, decrease the treatment time from a 25 days process to a five day process. And you see how the ammonia disappears from the manure and appears in the other uh, uh, tank concentrated. But uh, we can cut uh, the process time uh, five times, and that is a lot of money. Uh, we put the number to that is 70% uh, of the cost was cut by introducing this modification of radiation and avoiding the chemicals. Uh, so, uh, in the same experiment, uh, you see that uh, when we didn't put air, uh, the pH did not increase. You see, um, you see in these two lines, two, two replicates. But when we put the air, uh, we want about one unit. And so pH goes up to maybe nine and a half. And the other thing is alkalinity uh, is being removed by the process. So that is where the phosphorus uh, come into play. Uh, we are removing ammonia, alkalinity, and we're increasing the pH. And these are ideal conditions uh, for precipitating and recovering the phosphorus as something <coughs> useful. So uh, we tested two configurations of the process. Uh, one configuration uh, was to apply uh, the uh, magnesium chloride, that is the precipitating agent, uh, right after we remove the ammonia. And another configuration, we apply the uh, precipitated agent before we remove the ammonia. So, so uh, there are uh, differences in the process. And uh, so uh, what do we expect from here? We can expect uh, two different things according to the literature. One is when you have a lot of ammonia and you apply uh, uh, magnesium, uh, you precipitate the phosphorus typically as uh, estrobite. But uh, when <coughs> we don't have ammonia, then uh, uh, we add magnesium and we get a different type of mineral, and this is the nuberite. Uh, nuberite uh, was a rare, is a rare uh, biomineral that is uh, found in one of the deposits. So uh, this is the chemistry. This is what's going on with uh, the process. We have uh, carbonate, and we apply low radiation, and we increase the pH, and that helps remove the ammonia. And depending how much ammonia we remove, we can get estrobite or nuberite when we apply the magnesium chloride. So we have, have two products, uh, the phosphorus product and the recovery ammonium salts. 
and uh, for data for the second configuration, this was uh, when we applied the ammonium chloride, uh, magnesium chloride with high ammonia. Um, the pH uh, went to, uh, up one unit. So, so in this case, uh, we produce estrubite, but we don't need to add any sodium hydroxide. Uh, just with the radiation, uh, the pH goes up, and uh, the data is in these uh, slides. Uh, we have a mass balance where we get uh, maybe uh, uh, quantitative recovery of phosphorus, and 90% of the nitrogen recovered. Uh, and uh, the material analysis, uh, estrobite, uh, typical analysis, uh, about 5% nitrogen, 26% uh, phosphate, 10% magnesium. Uh, and uh, we also did uh, a mass balance, and you can see we start with 100%. Uh, if you get only estrobite, uh, maybe you get 100% uh, of the phosphorus and 7% of, uh, of the nitrogen recovery. But in this situation with the membranes, we get the other 80% of the nitrogen. That, uh, so, so that is the difference we just uh, obtained in estrobite. The <coughs> uh, surprise came here with this configuration because things change. Uh, we're removing uh, the phosphate with magnesium without ammonia. And uh, then uh, you see that the pH with the radiation increased one unit. Uh, we were able to precipitate uh, most of the phosphorus, uh, just adding magnesium chloride, we don't need to add alkali. But the kind of phosphate that we get is different. Uh, it was a, a very high grade magnesium uh, phosphate. It was uh, uh, more than 99% uh, plant available according to the uh, citrate test. And uh, just uh, to compare uh, with other things, 46%, it was uh, very similar uh, in composition, 46 to 7% uh, magnesium is uh, very similar to the uh, nuberite. And uh, when you look at the great uh, triple super phosphate that is standard for uh, commercial fertilizer, is 46%. Uh, Prop phosphate is 27%. Uh, so, so we were able to get to a very high grade uh, uh, product. Um, we, uh, this is uh, a data we did in the municipal uh, um, side stream with water to see if the process uh, can be replicated in a different type of effluent. And uh, we were able to, this is uh, a municipality in, in Virginia. Uh, and uh, we were able to replicate the experiment, uh, remove 80% of the phosphorus, 90% uh, of the nitrogen, and everything is uh, recovered. And when you compare um, in these two tables, you compare the Swan influence with the municipal centrate, uh, in James River, uh, was very treatment plant, uh, we were able to get uh, the same type of material. So um, uh, the process can be used uh, for not just uh, uh, swine, wastewater, but also for uh, municipal type of effluent. And uh, you see here the um, difference of the two materials. Uh, on, on the right is precipitation with magnesium, with ammonium, so this is estrobite. On the left, that is precipitation with magnesium, or the phosphorus, without ammonia, and that uh, is more kind of a white material, and that is the nuberite. And, and so, uh, the Patrick Dubé did some calculations of uh, how much it cost, uh, the whole process, and uh, he estimated that equipment, chemical, um, power, uh, this is capital and operational cost. You know, capital is annualized. Uh, so, so that um, you have the cost is about $57,000 per year. That is what the technology cost in a 5,200 um, swine farm. And, uh, and so that these are uh, the cost. And then, uh, potential revenue from the sale of nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, it was uh, 58,000. And, and, and so, so it's kind of a, 
uh, break even situation. Uh, but if uh, in the future uh, we can develop things like uh, nutrient credits, water quality credits, uh, uh, assuming a two, one trading ratio, uh, you can really make uh, money by implementing this uh, technology. So, so in the future uh, we will see uh, if these water quality credits uh, are implemented and that can have a positive impact on this type of technology. So uh, for conclusions, uh, we uh, remove the carbonate, uh, we increase uh, capture of nitrogen, we remove most of the phosphorus, and uh, we obtain a phosphorus with uh, a high uh, phosphorus grade. And uh, with uh, this slide, I can try to illustrate what we're thinking for the future. Uh, we were able to cut the alkali addition with low radiation. Now uh, we're looking at uh, cutting uh, the acid addition with uh, using water. And uh, that is what we're working now. So, so that will uh, cut the cost. So uh, if we uh, can capture uh, the, the CO2, the CO2 when, when it's mixed with the water, acidify the water. And then instantly you get uh, ammonium bicarbonate. So, so, so instead of using the sulfuric acid, in the future, we want to try to explore this kind of uh, line of research just to, to further uh, cut the cost. So, so uh, with that, uh, I conclude the presentation. Real quick. Great talk. Higher uh, concentration that uh, we got um, was uh, maybe uh, 70,000 parts per million of uh, nitrogen. Um, and that was done by repeating uh, about 10 batches. We use some of the semantic concentration solution and we need 10 batches. We can go up with 10% uh, with this technology. Um, uh, <coughs> Regarding uh, the use, uh, I think there is a value for the solution that has 10% nitrogen in the farm. Uh, outside the farm. Uh, we didn't go to the farm into the utilization and such, but uh, I believe that there is a good use. Yeah, no, we're, our starter solutions, we're just going to try to use on the farm where it's generated. It seems like that would be a good thing for you to do there instead of trying to haul water. You know, uh, if you can make a solid out of it, it's a different story. Yes, um, it should be uh, easy to, to use. Uh, it can also be combined with the phosphor proof if you need to do a mixture, the nitrogen and phosphorus. So, maybe I can 